everybody and welcome back once again. The season rolls along as I'm out at Riverdale High School. It's week six, it's game six, and I've got with me the head coach of the Warriors, head coach Will Kreisky. How you doing today, coach? Good, doing good. Well, it's been two weeks since I talked to you. You played a tough shovelful game and kind of rewind me a little bit on that game. I was doing a Rockville game at the time and the score was coming in and uh, thought you might be go down there and, and and not say play Riverdale ball, but I thought the score would be a little bit more than what it was in the first quarter. Kind of talk to me a little bit about it, about what? Uh, you know, I mean, we, did, we made a lot of mistakes, but that's, okay. that's you got to give uh, Shelbyville credit. Okay. I mean, they played really hard football, inspired football that night, and uh, they played really good. Did you come out different. flat? Yeah, they t they took the Oldman King off, drove it down the score. Six okay. Points. Six. And uh, luckily. Did y'all come alive after that, or, do you, or oh, did you yeah, think we did. you woke up? We, what, we, what, we, we what drove point? down and scored, and then but we, uh, after the score, we kicked off to them, held them, yep. and then we drove down again, but we dropped a pass in the end zone that bounced off the receiver, and they intercepted it. So, so they, they got a little momentum yeah, back. So yeah, they're, now so, they're in the game. So, so it was back and forth for a while. And then uh, at the beginning of the third, we scored, like, at 13-6. Uh, okay. Um, and then it just stayed there back and forth, back and forth all night. We actually gave them the ball inside the 10 twice in the fourth quarter and held them to zero points. I thought – that was a big deal yeah, for you, for your defense. Yeah, I thought they did a really good job. We threw interception and then we buffed a punt okay. uh, to get them inside the 10. So, you know, we just one of those nights where nothing went our way. But I was really – that at that point, I was really proud of that win over any other win. Because they struggled and came back. Yes. They fought through they it. Overcome, they, yes. that really, they finished it. Yes. And you, you had talked about that in, the, in some of your previous teams. Um, you felt like that uh, in previous teams you had coached up to this point uh, that they weren't they, they just couldn't grasp the point of finishing the ball. Game. Yes, and I thought these guys really took pride in not letting anybody score. Yeah. I mean, even you know I know it's jumping ahead to Rockville, but even no, 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 Rockville, no. you know they got off on a 79-yard run. With Dylan Woodruff, Dylan, Braden Woodruff <laughs> made a tackle at the three-yard line, and they come up with zero points. And that's and there's another big defensive stop, knowing that you know you've got some guys that'll run them down, yeah. run them down, not let them and get. The, and then the defensive collective as a whole comes together to make sure we keep them out of the end zone. So you feel like the two games, if we go back, let's go back to Rockville, let's pick that game up, region game. So it means a lot. It was here at your place. Atmosphere, everything okay? No, it was really good. It was the biggest game we've had here in over two years. Wow. Uh, yep. I thought the crowd was really good. Um, it was a really good atmosphere. You could tell it's two programs that are five miles away from each other. So, um, you know, for that type and of And they play better football. You were impressed with Rockville compared to what you'd seen in season yeah, one. Yeah, when they, you yeah. Know. Coach Rice and I, I bragged on um, WGNS, and he is doing a tremendous job. I mean, for, for taking a program in year three to where they are today, from where he started, it's, it's With really what impressive. little stuff he's got. He doesn't have, I mean, no, I'm, no. Not, I'm not saying. Like he doesn't he, have a practice field like this. He doesn't have a, a tackling sled yes. yet, I don't think. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what he's working yeah, with I mean, over I mean, there. He, you know, he's, all I know. Yeah, he's trying to make a game field, make a practice field. You know, it, it's all, it's tough stuff. He doesn't have a field house. It's a very expensive sport to play. It and it's very expensive. The, t the tools you need all the time, I mean, if you had your wish, I mean, you'd say, oh, I want that. Uh, you'd be like in the series of robot catalog when you was a kid. Oh, I want yeah. that, and I want that. And you'd be circling it, but it isn't that away. I mean, a lot of that equipment, though, is a cost. But you have to have a place to store it. You have to have a place to put it. And not only has he dealt with building a program, He's had to deal with all these COVID issues on top of that. So to, to see where he is at today is pretty impressive. You can tell. I mean, I told him for him being 36 years in this business, it's pretty impressive to have that much fire and energy to go and start a program. He doesn't yeah. complain. Never. You never hear, never. Him, never never. hear him say nothing. You know, it's, he's a he's a great guy. I mean, we're lucky to have him in the region. I, just, I You know, I don't know what uh, what who blessed us and gave him to us, but we're glad, and I'm glad Steve Luker went and got him. So, and, and of course, they play great four quarters, but, uh, you know, it, it, the, you could tell that after you got the momentum on them and you started going, uh, you was probably playing a little bully ball there. Your, your kids were sniffing it out. Oh, uh, yeah, our kids were excited. And, yeah. You know, it's the friends. It's part of it. Yeah, they went to school with all those guys, so it's, it's just part of the rivalry. You, uh, you won't be playing any bully ball Friday night. You're going no. to, so you, there won't be any bully ball. Because I've already seen this group. they got a good quarterback. Really good got quarterback. A, got, got that same Smyrna line that looks like it looks normally. And, you know, 
I, they beat Stewart's Creek, and, and Stewart's Creek was right in, right in and up to the end in, in week one. But uh, you guys are going to have your hands full with yeah, Matt Williams' crew. Yeah, Coach Williams is doing an excellent job. Those guys are really well coached. Uh, defense is really impressive. Yeah. It's really, really impressive defense. You know, after the Stewart's Creek game, that was the thing he said he wanted to work on. There was a lot of high tackling and a lot of things in, in that video. And I mean, I think the first thing he said to me is, we have got to do a better job of wrapping up and decide where we want to tackle when we go to attack a man. And then, I mean, he, was, he was pretty hot about it, but uh, I'm sure it sounds to me like he's got to straighten out. Yeah, he does. You know, it's pretty impressive what they did to Hillsborough. Hillsborough's a real athletic football team. And, they got after Hillsborough pretty good, so it's pretty impressive. You see what they've done so far and who all they've beaten up to this point is pretty impressive. He's going to be competitive in that side of the bracket. You got him, you got Ravenwood, and you got Summit over there. They're all three. They've, they've got some, you know, it's court and how to ramp out and who you got to play, but it, it, it's going to get interesting over there a little bit later yes, on. Well, the big news is, and always is, you know, with that Rockvale, you know, that puts you, you've got the Rockvale win, you've got the Blackman win. And, and you know, we got one Thursday, and I hope to come over and do that game for you, and that'll be the single game, Coach. What I guess I'm getting ready to try to say is, is after Friday night, you've got about 16 quarters left of regular season football, and it happens quick, doesn't it? It does. It's crazy that we're all this far in the season. You know, it, it is. It's nuts that we're, we're all. And you still ready. got a lot of football left. Yeah. I was talking to Caleb Herring on the sideline. I said, Dude, you've got two big games here left. That you're gonna to have to buckle up. You, I mean, all four of them, you got to buckle up. But you know, two of them, they're gonna be waiting for you to bust you in the mouth. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, they all are. I mean, they're yeah. all. Everybody wants a piece of Riverdale. Yeah. You know, and that's that's what's exciting about being here. You know, that no matter who you play, you're gonna get the best effort. Have you really enjoyed this season? I have. I mean, just having. Even though you're trying to have a kid and yeah. your wife, and it's all kooky, and, and, yeah. and we wish you the best. We hope everything that. comes Appreciate out. It. Everything Tomorrow morning, so we'll, we'll be done, and I won't miss any football, so it'll be, it'll be good. Every wife's happy, I'm happy. I guess the players will be happy that I'm not missing. So. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, I would be too. Okay, uh, looks like uh, Warrior fans, you're going to have to gather up, uh, load up the war wagon. You know where it's parked. Uh, head on down to Smyrna. That's going to be a good one. That'll be at 7 o'clock at the Dog Pound, and Jeff Shipley will be spending all the music down there, and he'll call you a fair game.